upstairs brick house and our friends on a catamaran. We're in Chagos. It's a high tide right now and the tide is going out. It won't be long before there's a very wide white sandy beach here, beautiful area. Rebecca and I were in Papieri, Tahiti on a tour and the tour guide stopped at an overlook of Venus Point and down below he pointed to a small island with two coconut palms on it and he said look at that island. A European man with his wife would starve to death within a week. A Polynesian man with three wives can live there happily ever after because the Polynesian man knows what to do with those coconut palms and a coconut palm is life. Everything about a coconut palm is useful. Everything about a coconut palm is useful. Of course, you can use the palm fronds for thatch roofs, you can make clothing out of it, you can make a sail for a sailing canoe. The logs can be laid across the stream for a bridge. There's a company in Fiji that actually mills those logs into lumber and make furniture out of it. It's a very nice tight grain wood looking something in coloration like mahogany. But most of us tourists think about coconut palms because we drink the water from the green coconuts. And I think green coconuts are more popular for water because there's just so many of them hanging in the trees and it's very easy to open with a machete. The, the damp fibrous material of the green coconut is easy to cut into and drink from where the older, the older brown, yellow and brown coconuts, the uh, material is very hard and a machete just bounces right off. But the green coconut, once you drink the water inside, the coconut meat has not been well formed, so it's soft like a pudding, so you can scrape that out and eat that. I know natives on one coral atoll will do, they will eat two or three green coconuts, drink the water and eat the soft meat inside for breakfast. And two or three coconuts will get them through until lunch. I much prefer the water from a yellow coconut. Anything too green just tastes too greeny. So I like the yellow coconut. No water in any of these nuts tastes like coconut. It's kind of a neutral flavor. It doesn't taste good and it doesn't taste bad. I certainly wouldn't pay for it in a store. But the yellow coconut is just a little smoother consistency and flavor of the water. The brown coconut water it can get to be a little thicker and oilier, especially if it's an older brown coconut. So they're all drinkable. All the meat inside is all edible at the different stages. There's one more stage of coconut though, and that's if you can pick up a coconut with the sprout on it and a little, some roots just coming out the bottom. Oh, look at this guy. So even this guy likes coconut. Right, there you go. To open it up, inside is a white fibrous material called UTO, at least in one island nation, that, that is their language for it, U-T-O, UTO. And you can scrape out that white fibrous material and eat it, it's very sweet. It really tastes like sugar cane juice, so I can only eat so much UTO. But if you scrape further, get all the UTO out, the, uh, there's still white coconut meat inside that can be grated. Now natives, after grating their coconut, they'll take the fiber, oops, sorry guys, they'll take the fiber, put their grated coconut in this coconut husk fiber and twist it to get the coconut cream, which they use for cooking. Of course, nowadays we'd put that in a pina colada. But you can also use um, cheesecloth, cotton cloth, any kind of a strong cloth to twist your grated coconut and get that coconut cream out. It's really nice to put it in rice or any of your fresh fish that you catch out here on the reef. Coconut goes with everything and everybody loves coconut. Pigs, chickens, I have even seen an island dog and cat kind of tussle over an open coconut. Everybody loves coconut. Even these guys. This is a uh, coconut crab, a young coconut crab. They live like the hermit crab. There's the hermit crab around. Oh, here we go. 
this hermit crab, he's, he, he's much smaller. They're relatives, but he won't get too big. This guy, I'll show you later on when we do a little section on uh, coconut crabs, how big they get. But he will live in a shell until he just can't find shells big enough anymore. And then he's on his own in the open. If you pick up a brown coconut off the ground, shake it. As long as you can hear water on the inside, you're good to go. No water, throw it back on the ground. Traditionally, natives on the atolls would use a pointed hardwood stick set securely in the ground to open brown coconuts. Modern technology gave them pointed hunks of steel to do the same work. But us cruisers, we don't have such modern technology, so we have to use an ax. They all tend to perforate it along two sides, just to make it easier to pry open the husk. A machete does not work on these hard, dry coconuts. Of course, you pry, I don't want to pry it this way, I want to use the nut as a leverage point. Look at all these little guys, they smell coconut. Here's another one. Oh, they're going to be well fed today, I'll take care of them. Oh, hello. Y'all finish washing? Ready to weave some baskets? I just can't tolerate any more mosquitoes. Yeah, they've gotten dead. The two eyes are extremely hard. Even if you took an electric drill with a bit, and try to drill in there, it would be very difficult, like drilling into steel. The mouth is very soft. That's where the green sprout comes out. And you can take a pointed knife and just dig into the mouth and dig out the meat, and then drain the liquid out before you split the coconut in half. And then there's lines going down the sides. So what I'm going to do is take the axe and hit it broadside, right down the center of these lines right between the eyes and sometimes it just breaks in half we'll see how well it works perfect we have nice clear water inside at the market if you buy an already husk coconut and have the option it's best to buy one with the fibers covering the eyes and the mouth of the coconut this helps to keep air from getting inside through the eyes and the mouth and spoiling the inside of the coconut. Generally a husked coconut will last, oh, maybe four days in the tropics before it starts to spoil. Well, I hope this video was helpful and worthwhile for you. If so, please give a thumbs up down below there and a subscribe. And thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.